everybody. Welcome to Let's Talk About It. I'm your host, Tiffany Smith, and on this show, we're talking about some of the most common questions that young ladies have about their health. With me today, I have Dr. Lauren Stryker, who is a gynecologist and an expert in this field. So hopefully she can help us shed some light on the subject. Welcome, Dr. Stryker. Hey, Tiffany. It's great to be here. Thanks so much for coming. Now, it seems like there is a lot to talk about when it comes to sexually transmitted infections. Is this a lot of hype or are you actually seeing a lot of women coming in that are infected? Oh, I wish this was hype, but a day doesn't go by that I don't diagnose somebody with a sexually transmitted infection. You know, sometimes women come to the office because they suspect that they might have something and I check them out, but more often than not, women who think they've been being safe, they think they're doing everything right and they come in just for their annual exam and then I find that they have something. Yeah, there's a lot to think about. and. I actually just learned that HPV can cause cervical cancer. Can you explain that? Yeah, that's actually true. There are certain types of HPV that can cause cervical cancer. Now, many types of HPV go away without causing any harm at all, and some can cause genital warts. But anytime someone gets cervical cancer, we know that HPV is the culprit. Now, this might sound like a stupid question, but what exactly is your cervix and what is it for? Okay, come on, this is not a stupid <laughs> question. You know, guys have the obvious advantage of their anatomy is right there, so they know where everything is. Women, things are a little bit more mysterious. Now, the cervix is the bottom part of the uterus located at the back of the vagina. And the purpose of the cervix, of course, is to allow sperm in so that it can meet up with the egg and get pregnant. And it also allows menstrual blood to flow out. And during pregnancy, the purpose of the cervix is to open up the mouth of the uterus so that the baby can come out. And that's why you want to keep your cervix healthy so that down the road, when you do want to have babies, you're able to do that. I recently hit the streets to find out some questions that girls had. How often does HPV cause cervical cancer? Every day, 30 women are told they have cervical cancer. And the numbers are much, much higher if you look at women that have precancerous changes on their pap smear. Is there anything that you can do once you're diagnosed with HPV to prevent it from causing cervical cancer? Well, absolutely. When someone is exposed to HPV, even if it's destined to progress to cervical cancer, this usually doesn't take weeks or months, but years. And that's why it's so important that a woman see her gynecologist regularly. That's one phone call that I know not a lot of girls are excited to get when they Ugh. get the call that says, Something's abnormal with your pap smear. You know, I gotta tell you, it's not a phone call that most gynecologists are excited to make because I know that when I pick up the phone and call someone and say, your pap test is abnormal, it's gonna be panic. There's a lot of good information out there, but there's also a lot of bad information. And that's why it's so important to talk to your doctor. Just make sure you get in and get it taken care of. So best piece of advice, if you get that phone call, listen to what your gynecologist has to say. Don't panic. All right, well, thank you so much for being here, Dr. Stryker. That's it for this edition of Let's Talk About It. I'm Tiffany Smith, and we'll see you next time with even more information on how to get healthy and stay healthy.